all right so welcome to the first day of selenium training okay now uh, to start off we have to start off with java okay it might feel you on first day that fine you are knowing these things right but i have to cover them because most of the people some of some of the people they don't know about it right the first thing is that if you want to learn selenium with java you need to install jdk okay just go to google and type download jdk it's the complete java kit development kit okay and it's better if you download jdk 8 fine and you can download it from the oracle website go to the oracle website and you can download it for your windows or mac or linux machine and you will have to create a oracle account create a free oracle account and you can download you will get the option to create the account and install it on your machine right and once you have java installed okay you have to download eclipse which i think most of the people have these days eclipse is the editor for java you write the java code inside eclipse you need to go like this download eclipse and you can download and install it on your machine okay so depending on your os you can download 64 bit 32 bit whatever you want okay right i have eclipse on my pc hold on um just on it actually i remove that okay when you download you will get a folder like this okay you there are different versions of eclipse eclipse oxygen a older version was luna mars okay look it really doesn't matter what kind of uh, version you use in eclipse okay because it's it's a tool actually for developers we are testers and we are just using a small api known as selenium so you can use any version that's not a problem okay you can run eclipse fine and it will help you to write java programs very easily it's a very good user interface fine and it will ask you to set up a workspace in the beginning okay uh, let it run for a minute or so hold on right so meanwhile yeah it's running so this is what it asks you this is the path of the this is known as the workspace path this is the path where you will be storing all the code and all everything okay so you can name it i name it as august weekday 2019 so i'll be storing all the code on this location during the training or whatever coding we are doing for the frameworks for selenium for java you can download that coding as well i will give you the download location from the google drive you can download it from there okay so it's starting eclipse <coughs> right now look java is the major road map block for people okay meanwhile the eclipse starts up i just want to inform you few things it's the major road block okay and people tend to ignore java and jump over to selenium don't do that okay we have uh, you know we have this seven tutorials on java which will be there in your pre recorded sessions okay they will also help you master java in a real good sense a person who has good knowledge on java it takes him very less time to pick up selenium okay so anyways 
and this is the welcome screen of Eclipse. Okay, you can close it and you'll get a window like this. Alright, this is Project Explorer on the left side and this is the area where we code and all everything. Okay, so let's start with the very basics. Right, I'll create a new project. You go to File, New and you can select project and under java you can select a simple java project ok click on next fine and i'll call it day one ok i am not going to talk about selenium alright i'm just going to talk about basics of java basics of programming right but I am assuming you know basic things. I am assuming you know that what if statements are, what for loops are, okay, what a function is. Alright, because I just don't want to start from that basics. Okay, I want to start from the fundamentals of object oriented programming, which is known as OOPS. Alright, the reason for this is that. If you go to the official website of Selenium, the official website of Selenium is seleniumhq.org. Right. If you go over here, then the first line says that Selenium automates browsers. It's a web based automation testing tool. It is for browsers. It is not for testing desktop applications it's only for web and you click on the download link when you click on the download link you have all these versions in which selenium is available all these languages selenium is available in different languages okay we are going to learn selenium with java it is one of the most famous language selenium with java okay and you can click on this java doc link and this will open the documentation of selenium with java okay look you cannot just learn from this documentation from day one because uh, you need to understand the concepts of object oriented programming properly some people they just say that fine I know object oriented programming I have studied it and I have done it in my college or something it's not like that okay you have to have the inner uh, confidence you have to have that professional confidence in object oriented programming okay it's not just the superficial knowledge i'm talking about all right so we'll be starting with oops i'll be telling you everything today is the first day it's just an introductory class okay right now before i start off okay before i start off with java over here right let me tell you a little bit about selenium as well okay that what it is and what are the components we are going to learn and where all we will be applying the java knowledge okay look uh, there are uh, three aspects of selenium right I'll explain it on a paint. It will be much easier. Hold on. Right. There is a tool known as Selenium IDE. Okay. 
Selenium IDE is a tool which only works on Mozilla. All right, it's an extension, and it to, these days it's also working on Chrome. There is a Chrome extension as well. All right, but this tool is actually not very good, and we are not going to study it in the training because most of the professional companies they don't use it. Okay, the reason being it's primarily a record and run tool. I hope you know what record and run is. There is a button you click on, record using that button and then whatever is happening on your screen, that stuff gets recorded. Guys, please keep your microphones on mute. I would request you, please, right. So whatever is there on the screen, it gets recorded with the record and run option. But record and run is not successful. Uh, the reason being uh, these days the websites are dynamic if you go to a website like say uh, cnn.com and record it today tomorrow the complete website is going to change so we don't use that record and run option selenium id gives us no reports it helps you to evade java you don't need to learn programming but you know when you are not getting any reports no html default reports right then it seriously makes no use or no sense to use this tool as a beginner fine it looks very fancy that fine you are able to automate very easily right so you cannot write uh, dynamic scripts to some extent you can write but introducing higher level of uh, dynamicity it's not possible in IDE so that is why that is why we have selenium web driver first of all we just saw web driver is available in uh, multiple languages okay it's available in multiple languages. We just saw Java, C Sharp, Python. Okay. And it can help you to write dynamic scripts. Dynamic scripts, it means that even if the website changes, the content of the site changes every day. I'm not talking about the layout. The layout remains the same, but the content changes then the same script will help you to automate the website very easily right it helps you to generate very good reports we'll be studying about something known as extent reports and all html reports you can embed screenshots in the reports okay so uh, you can present error messages logs everything okay right and this is the main advantage of web driver all right then you can use different tools like a uh, test ng and maven git jenkins along with it I'll, I'll tell you in a brief what these tools are okay and this is all java based you need to learn oops for this okay right and there's another component in selenium which is known as selenium grid we will also be talking about it it's very simple tool what it helps you is that it helps you to run your test cases parallelly among mul multiple machines suppose you have made a framework okay you have 1000 test cases in the framework and you want to save your time so or you want to run them on different operating systems okay right so in that case we build a framework okay so what we do is that, oh, sorry, we use grid, not build a framework, we use grid. 
we use a centralized machine okay and we connect the other machines to this centralized machine the centralized machine is known as hub the other machines are known as nodes so you just put your code or the framework on this centralized machine and you run the test cases parallelly among different machines or different machines having different operating systems it saves your time basically okay it helps you to run on different environments right okay so this the, this is what and this is again this grid is also java based so you just cannot ignore java right so in a nutshell we'll be doing we'll not be doing this id in this training but yes you'll be doing web driver and grid and how to build a framework okay most of the times uh, people have the very general question that what basically a framework is fine how do you define a framework look i'll just tell you in simple words today is an this is the first class i don't want to rush out with things i want to give you a very good overview before we actually jump over to the real stuff okay right now what is a framework most of the people have an idea which is 50 correct 50% correct 50% incorrect or some of them they don't know about it right now if i suppose if i give you uh say 1000 test cases manual test cases to automate okay right then how will you do that and will you do that the first question is will you do that look uh, i want to talk about automation automation is done in the regression phase why am i talking about it is i'll just tell you in some time okay regression phase means the project is stable when a project a new project is made it's unstable it's got lot of defects right you manually test it and you reach a phase where the stability of the project is there the defects aren't there it is running good but with a minor change in some of the features or functionality you have to test the complete project again which is quite frustrating so automation is actually meant for that that when the project is stable you just write a script which will automate the test cases and present you with the test reports as well so basically automation is done on stable projects right the reason for this is if you are testing something manually and it takes you 5 minutes to test manually then if you want to write an automation script to or to te- to uh, implement the test case implement the whole test case in a automated fashion then it might take you 5 to 6 hours to write the script okay which can automate a scenario which takes you manually maybe 5 minutes so writing the script takes time all right time of course means investment of resources and money for every company okay and if your project is not stable if it's having lot of defects or if it is changing constantly then you if even if you write the script then you have to change it in the coming time okay and that creates a problem all right so that is why we always say that make sure the project is stable it's in a good phase regression phase and then you automate it all right you build a framework okay you take your 1000 test cases and build a framework now how do you 
automate 1000 test cases what kind of strategy you apply what kind of methodology or approach you apply okay that methodology or approach is known as a framework and there are different types of frameworks now what is a framework let me give you an overview first all right look suppose these are my test cases okay right this is my first test case second test case third fourth okay and uh, i want to automate them i want i have a requirement that i want to run them uh, one after another okay right or i want to run them parallelly right sometimes i want to run them optionally optionally means that uh, when i am automating them i want the script to run test case 1 and then 3 and then 4 i don't want to run the second test case right so uh, there are different requirements and moreover when the test cases are being automated i want the data to be read from an external file maybe an xls file maybe a json file maybe a text file or a properties file there are different types of files in which you can keep data right and you would also want proper reports to be generated that is it should be a html report having screenshots in it screenshots general screenshots or error screenshots you should be able to email the reports as well to the team or to the client automated emails okay the mail should automatically go right it should have proper logs the reports should have proper logs that what happened at every moment when the tests were running okay uh, for example let me just show you just a minute i am not coming over to eclipse right now instantly okay just a minute i'll just show you this was something happening this weekend yeah for example this is a sample report okay don't go by it completely all right so this is a this is a example of extent report okay you can have the test cases mentioned out here okay and the steps are here this is just a simple sample okay so this kind of report i am talking about a professional report which can be made right and apart from that you want to integrate other systems like a selenium grid which will help you to run the test cases parallelly or build systems like maven and I I don't want to talk about them right now. Okay, what they are, or you want to integrate Git Jenkins. So, how do you do all these things? You have test cases on the right side. You have to read the data, generate reports, integrate all these systems. So, what we do is that we use a centralized controller. This centralized controller can be JUnit, or it can be Test Ng. or it can be pdd framework like cucumber okay so these centralized controllers what they do is that they read the data 
okay they call the test cases invoke the test cases right pass over the data to them help you generate reports logs everything and connect with the external and connect with these systems as well tools as well so in a whole this whole thing is known as a framework all right and if i talk about selenium then selenium is just in this blue box selenium will only help you write automation scripts selenium has got commands which will help you to interact with the browser but selenium will never generate reports selenium will never help you read the data from excel files or integrate with all these systems selenium web driver okay it's just a simple tool which will help you to interact with the browser to write to click on a link or to just automate the browser operations it will not generate test cases for you for that you have to use the other stuff which i just talked about so in this course it is not just about learning selenium it's about lot of other things as well because ultimately you have to learn to build a framework okay and now i am going to start off with java okay because the first thing towards the learning process is java and object oriented programming right most of the people must be knowing these things but give me a day or so we gradually will go over to other topics as well okay in the source folder i'll be creating a new class in case you have any questions or doubts you can move your mouse on the top there is a chat option you can use or you can unmute yourself and ask me questions okay right so now i'll just make a simple java program sample or basics of java all right click this click this option public static void main and you have a simple file generated with some code in it right just a minute i'll increase my font size okay now public class basics of java it's got a main function in it what is public what is static okay i cannot explain you instantly without teaching you oops object oriented programming so just accept few things as they are and of course 90% of people over here must have already made a java program by now okay so uh, main is a function which is there in every programming language is the starting point fine i am assuming basic things that you know what an integer is i am assuming that right what a string is right and you know what are the basic commands like system dot out dot print ln is the basic command to print something in java you just write system dot s y s o hit control space bar and select this option it will come up system dot out dot print ln right this is to print something in java if you run it this is the run of run button on the top you click on it you can run the program in the console you will have selenium right and um i am assuming you know what a for loop is what a while loop is right okay so this is the major thing because you know uh, without this i am i don't think so you should join this training you should take the videos watch them get a background and then join the training in the videos in the pre recorded videos which we have 
they are very elaborate in java okay right now uh, the basic thing is about some features of eclipse which you will be using a lot during when you are working with selenium okay first of all i want to talk about window management in in eclipse and then debugging okay right sometimes i have seen people close this project explorer by mistake or they close this console by mistake and then they wonder that how do you get back though that stuff okay everything is inside window hold on window show view and you can get them over here you want the package explorer back you click on package explorer you want the console back you click on console okay all the windows are present over here as a beginner or even as a intermediate person you actually get stuck badly if you don't know about this right secondly if you right click on the project you get number of options we will be talking about them gradually okay there is a properties option as well in which there are options and this is the physical path of the project okay where the project is lying on the hard drive you can open it from here as well okay just this just just for a general info these will these things will be required with time okay suppose i want to copy an external file in this project external file means that if i have a file somewhere else on my hard drive okay say i have a file known as i'll create a simple text document okay sample.txt okay i want to introduce it in the project i want to put it under the source folder you just need to copy and paste it copy over here and paste it under the source folder it's that simple okay right these are few things but as a beginner or as an intermediate person you get confused at times right suppose i share the java files with you after the training and if you want to copy those java files in your project you just need to use this copy paste options fine the next thing is uh, debugging which is really important okay suppose i have this code where i have written three lines and i write more lines for example int j equals to 100 then i write a for loop say for int x equals to 0 to x less than 5 x plus plus and inside it i write uh, i equals to i plus j cross x print the value of i come out of for loop and print and suppose this is the program i initialize i to 1 and j to 10 if i run it it gives me an output like this it prints selenium first and then it does all these operations it actually increments the value of i every time okay now suppose i have to run this program line by line and i want to see what is happening at every moment okay then i can debug this program okay you can put a breakpoint on the first line you can double click on this this will put a blue mark on the first line okay click on this debug icon on the top left right and the program will run in the debug mode 
you click on yes and you will see a window changing the perspective of eclipse window will change fine and you will see a green line on this particular line green line means the program has stopped if you hit f6 of the keyboard on the top you will have a variable section where you will be able to see all the variables i is initialized to 1 even if you move your mouse on i you will see the value of i so you can run the program line by line instead of running it in one go and at real time you can check out the status of the variables as well it helps a lot when you are building scripts and to check out where stuff is going wrong if you hit f6 again this s string will be equal to hello there see it's updated over here as well right and then f6 again it will print selenium right and f6 again it will have j as a variable as well the value is 10 right and then it will start the loop x starts from 0 okay the first operation is done the value of i is 1 1 is added to j which is 10 cross x which is 0 so uh, the value of i remains 1 only and it is printed as 1 so next time x becomes 1 and you know it prints 11 and you keep on hitting f6 you can see the variables changing the values on the top as well right and you can move the mouse over them and you can see the updated values if i hit f8 of the keyboard not f6 but f8 then the program will normally run okay so there are two keys f6 and f8 i'll again run and run this in the debug mode okay f6 will help you run it line by line and f8 if you run if you click on it it will just run the program normally you can put a breakpoint on a line by double clicking on a line you can put multiple breakpoints say I put a breakpoint on this particular line as well so I have two breakpoints one is over here one is over here if I run it in the debug mode then the code will stop, stop on the first breakpoint if I hit F6, it will run line by line. If I hit F8, it will run normally but stop on the next breakpoint. From where maybe I can hit F6 again to just check out stuff. Or I can hit F8 to run it normally and then again stop on the breakpoint. So with F8, it will run again and again and stop on the breakpoint and then eventually the program will terminate. Okay, so when you are writing scripts and when you are getting errors and you are not sure what you are doing, you can use this thing, especially in framework building. This, this is the backbone of learning. Okay, you can actually debug stuff and come to know your mistakes. You can go back to the normal window. You can, this is the open perspective icon on the top right side. Okay. Click on this and select the Java perspective. We were in the debug perspective. You can switch back to the Java perspective and you will get the normal window. Okay. Right. So, this is how, this is how a basic Java program runs and you can debug it and these are some of the features of Eclipse. Right. So I will not jump over to OOPS today, I will jump over to it tomorrow, alright. But before that, anybody is having any questions because I need a stretch of 40-45 minutes to talk about OOPS. Today was just an introductory session, not much, okay. 
right i don't want to jump over to selenium directly right anyone with any questions